Don't you just love the jewelry I'm wearing? Actually, I'm wearing my scrapbook. Hi, I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap, and today we're gonna learn how to make this fabulous little style stone pendant that you can actually wear. So come along and let me show you how to do it. Let me show you what this little tiny book looks like close up. Right here we have an example that we're going to make today and it has the stone covers, it has some clasps, and it has these inside pages. So the first thing we're going to get out of the way is that inside page so that we can attach it to our book a little bit later. So here we have the page, you can get the dimensions from your instructions, and you simply fold it in half the long way. If you happen to have a bone folder you might want to just reinforce that little crease you're going to make. Let's fold these halves in half again. So I'll bring the open edge up to the top of that first fold that you made. I'm going to turn it over, take this edge, we've folded it in half twice. Let's fold it in half another time. So take this fold, here's my open edge, I'll bring it up, turn it over, do the same thing. So if you look at this now, it looks sort of like a tent. Let's turn the tent inside out, okay? So here we go, we've turned it inside out, and now I'm going to bring these edges up to the top and fold that in half. And then we'll fold this in half. Okay, that's just a kind of a creative way to make a fan, you know, like what you did when you were little. So you can take your, your piece, and these are your inside pages for your book, and we'll just set it aside. And now it's time to move on to our little style stones. Now these are by Clear Snap, and these are a little bit over one inch tiles, and they're ready, they're thirsty for ink, ready to be decorated, and they have these great little pre-drilled holes on the edge. This decorative side is nice, but in this case, we're actually going to use the plain side. So I'm going to turn it over, and this is ready to receive the ink. No primer required. So I'm just going to use an amber-colored ink pad, and I'm going to rub the ink directly onto the stone. I just love how the ink soaks right in. This will handle any type of ink you wish to use, pigment, chalk base, dye base, it doesn't really matter. And then I like to create little frames around my stones and finish them off. So I'm going to come in with some black ink and a sponge. I'm just going to ink the edge of the stone just to sort of finish off the edge. Now in this process, don't panic. You'll probably get some ink on your fingers. To me, that's always proof that one has been playing and being creative. All right, so here we go. And now this is pretty well inked. You might have some excess ink on the top, if you want to just rub it away, that's fine. And now I'm ready to bring in my heat tool. A heat tool is not a hair dryer, okay? This gets up to about 450 degrees. I'm going to heat set that ink, and this is an important step. Next, my stone is ready for an image. I'm going to bring in a rubber stamp, and you can use any rubber stamp that you happen to have on hand. This stamp has all kinds of little images on it. And I'll place my style stone anywhere on the stamp, I'm going to press down firmly so that I'm sure to transfer the image from the stamp to the stone. Notice the stamp is laying down and I'm working with the style stone. I'm not going to try to take my stamp and aim it onto the stone that's laying on the table. Now if you look, I have a perfectly beautiful impression. Once again, we need to heat set this image and it's heat set when it's not shiny. Okay. Let's head over to our embossing station because we're going to take this up another level. Okay, over here I have my Top Boss Embossing Ink by Clear Snap. This is a clear ink that is going to really help us when we want to put some powder on here. The ink will make the stone wet. So we're using the Top Boss Ink Pad. I'm just directly putting that on there until it's nice and wet. This is a one ounce jar of Top Boss Embossing Powder that's thick and clear. And it's actually a meltable powder that you can put onto your projects and when you heat it, it creates a shiny enamel. And as if I was adding a pinch of salt to something, I'm just going to sprinkle some of this powder onto the stone. Next, we need to heat set this. So stand by and watch the powder melt. While the powder is still hot, go right ahead and sprinkle some more on. And, and since the, the powder is still wet, it should stay in place and you repeat that process several times. All right, so when you're satisfied that you have plenty of coats on there and it's thoroughly coated with um, the enamel, come back to your Top Boss pad 
and add some additional embossing ink to a tiny little art piece. It could be a piece of paper, it could even be just anything decorative that you want to embed down into the enamel that we already have here. I've actually cut this one from a little sheet of tiny little art pieces. The secret here is to put the embossing um, ink onto the top surface of this paper and also heat that enamel again to almost liquid form. I can see it's a liquid now. I'll stop the heat and carefully position this piece right into the enamel. Come back with some powder and heat. And very soon, after sprinkling and heating and sprinkling and heating, you will reach the point where you are satisfied that your entire style zone has been covered with enamel and that your little art image is embedded underneath that enamel. It's a great effect. All right, so you'll do that same thing with the front cover and the back cover. Then take those inside pages that we folded earlier and glue them into place onto the inside of your style stone on this side and this side. An important tip to remember is, remember I told you that these have horizontal holes pre-drilled. You want to make sure that all of your holes are lined up along the area where you want the spine of your book to be. Okay, Just remember that before you embark on this project. Set it up in advance so that you know where those holes are going to be. Then what you want to take is some really strong jewelry grade flexible elastic cord and we're going to thread this onto our stone. So we have the hole right here and you'll just thread that into place all the way through the bottom or the top hole of, of your cover. And when it comes out to the other side, you'll just simply take a clasp. And the great part about this clasp is that the holes in the clasp actually come into perfect alignment with the holes on the stone. So you go through the clasp, back through the side, and let me show you on the finished piece here how that's going to look. If I just open it up maybe this way, you'll be able to see We've threaded through here, onto the clasp, back through, added some, some small beads through here through this other clasp, back around adding some more beads. Now when you're done you'll have your two ends, I can find here are the ones that I had when I made this one. I simply tied a double knot into that end and pulled it really snug. The snugness will help keep the piece in place as you're working. Alright, so if you're a little bit curious about how that all is going to work, just be sure to check your design guide because the diagram for stitching this all together is right there. Now this little tail end that you have there, just simply slide it down into the style stone by moving the cord around in the piece and that should be no trouble at all. Okay now the next thing is to add something from which to hang your little booklet. Take a ball chain, you can do a number of different things and just simply pull on that elastic it really is very strong. And now you have threaded your book onto some ball chain. You can also use keychains. Maybe you want to give one to dad. Put it on a keychain. You can put it on wax cord, satin cord. You can put it on a beaded necklace. You can put it on a pin. So there's all these different things that you can do just as this one little book. Now to decorate it and add your memories right to the book, you can see here that I have all these tiny photos in this book. I didn't have to do anything to make these photos because every time I get my pictures developed, I happen to get one of these index proof sheets and I just use those. I don't have to use any technological skill whatsoever. Just take a scissors, cut the photos out, and add them to your album. Isn't that fun? All right, so let me show you some of the other examples of little books that we've made. They're all done with the same concept, just variations on the theme. This one actually doesn't have the embossing on it. It's just a nice smooth sort of vintage aged look to it. Very very soft. We've taken the stones here and we've strung them together with the same elastic cord and some beads to create an awesome bracelet. Look at this one. Four stones on the front. You don't have to just do one stone on each side. You can do two, you can do four, you can do eight. This one makes a beautiful little album inside. This is for your coffee table. Here we have 12 embossed stones making a gorgeous book. And these are all stitched together with that same elastic cord all the way around, beads on the spine holding everything together. You can even take little metal embellishments and work those right into the enamel as well. Little keys, little charms. It doesn't really what it, matter what it is as long as it's heat safe. Because remember that heat tool gets up to 450 degrees. Wow, we've got some awesome wearable art. You can make one of these to wear every day of the week. Give them to grandma, give them to your favorite niece, whatever you want to do. But either way, these style stone pendants will be the talk of your wardrobe. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.